Hi, welcome to the first review that I've done in a while. Um, decided to do this one in the kitchen. Why? I'm not too sure, but I don't know. It looks, it's kind of nice in here. I do a lot of work in here, actually. Um, I do uh, do a lot of work from home and I end up working in the kitchen because I just find it a nice working environment, nice room and stuff. So anyway, I thought I'd do, um, I thought I'd do a review in the kitchen. So what are we looking at today? Well, I'm going to take a first look, he says, nearly dropping it on the floor, a first look at, first look for me, anyway, and first impressions, so to speak, of the Sennheiser EW100 G3 lavalier mic set. So that's the transmitter section that I'm showing you there. And you also get that, which is virtually identical, which is the receiver. So what do you get with the kit? Well, you get one receiver like this. You get a cable like this that goes into the top and has an XLR connector on the other end. You also get the equivalent of that, which has a um, 3.5 mil uh, headphone jack, basically. So the kind of thing that you plug into your iPod or iPhone, and uh, and then the other end can go into, for example, a digital, digital SLR, because the mic inputs on most digital SLRs are not the kind of pro-grade XLR balance line connectors. They are still just standard 3.5 mil jacks. Um, and you also get the, I think it's the ME100. I might have, to, might have to double check on that actually, but I think it's this one. So this is the ME100, the actual microphone itself. This is a Channel 38 version. Channel 38 is now free in the UK. When I say free, it's now been vacated by the people who were previously using it up until the end of 2012. So most people are being recommended to avoid versions further in, in other areas of the scale which may become cluttered with other, other stuff because basically all, all digital um, all analog televisions now turned off in the UK so they're kind of reallocating and freeing up various uh, frequencies around that range so these are the channel 38 versions and the frequency range on this if I just have a look is a 606 to 648. They do require a license. Don't forget that. They do require a license from JFMG, which you have to pay a, an annual fee for to be able to use this legally in the UK. Anyway, these things in the UK retail at about 450 pounds, round about that, sort of between 450 and 500 pounds. That's for the microphone, the cables, and the transmitter and the receiver. So. Let's give you a bit more. I'll do these shots separately so that I can open them to myself. So they open up and um, inside are the, uh, is the slot for the two batteries. Something I don't like about them is that most of the controls, the on-off controls and the settings are actually you have to open it to use it. So I can imagine that's a good idea for, you know, so for, for proper use because it, it basically, it basically blocks it off, it seals it, but you have to open it out like that to be able to actually get to the on off button. Um, so let's turn the thing on. This is the receiving side. And you see on the screen there, this is currently set to 622.5 megahertz, which is channel three. We're just scrolling through the screens here. And um, my battery's on three, you can see on the left hand side there you've got um, an RF signal which indicates how strong you're receiving the uh, transmitter and those little dots you can see there, let me just bring that light back on, uh, those, those little dots you can see there that's the level of the squelch so basically the RF level has to be above that in order for it to break through the squelch. It's pretty straightforward. The other meter there is the AF level which uh, shows you your audio level. You also get that displayed on the transmitter as well. So you can see that and you have an AF peak on the transmitter too. So you can easily see whether or not your audio is uh, clipping. And yeah, so on the receiver, you've got a, just two main screens as far as I know. And zero dB, I think that's what our audio out is set to. So you can 
Separately from the sensitivity of the microphone on the transmit pack, you can adjust the audio out level on this. So if you, if, if you, can't, if you haven't quite got the level you need or if something's a little bit too, too loud, I would generally, too hot, I suppose people might say, um, I would generally advise reducing it on the sensitivity of the microphone, not the receiver, but that's not always gonna be possible, is it? Depending on when you're using them and where you're using them. So there is the option to lower that on there. So let's have a quick look through the menus. You press the set button, that takes you into the menus, and at any time, the on off button is the equivalent of an escape button. So we go into the, uh, into the menus, we've got squelch, setting the squelch, we've got setting the sync. Sync is to um, link these two via this here, which is the uh, an infrared transmitter, and you can just hold the two, hold your receiver close to your transmitter and sync the two. So it says, right, okay, what channel are you on? What name have you got? Because you can set a name on the devices as well, on the device as well, and uh, and uh, sync the two up. Really handy. Um, so yes, squelch, and there's the frequency pre uh, frequency preset which if you press enter, I will just quickly carry on scrolling through them. There you can set the name. I've still got them set to the default here, which is you know what they come out of the box in, the EW100G3. AF out, that's what I was just talking about there, the, uh, the level out of this actual audio output into the camera or into the audio recorder, field recorder, whatever you're using. Uh, and then you've got an advanced section of the menu and exit. Right, so squelch is if you set that, you set it to middle, low, or high. So if we set this to high, for example, and click set, store it, and then press escape quickly to go out, you can see that these dots here on the left-hand side are now higher, meaning that you need a stronger RF signal to be able to get past, you know, get the audio through and get some output. Uh, go back into that, set that to middle again. That's just, I personally prefer it to be set. Uh, easy setup gives you a current list of your channels and so you can basically hang on a second you can choose for example bank bank six and then go through the frequencies within that bank and you'll notice that um, well here you've got an option for scan new list now scan new list what it does on the receiver side of things is it scans through um, frequencies nearby you, it scans through whatever's on air near you, and looks to see what you've got three, uh, free in those frequencies. So if you've got something being used elsewhere, um, something being used nearby, um, then it'll pick that up and it'll say, well, some aren't free in that. So you'll notice that in the list, we've got in bank three, we've got, um, it says at the bottom, free 12. What that's saying is that we, there are um, 12 frequencies free within bank three. Um, 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 advanced, so we can tune it. Pilot tone, pilot tone I would recommend you always use. What is the pilot tone? Well, it's a frequency that gets sent with the audio. It's like a carrier. Pilot tone is used in radio as well. Uh, it's you know normal FM radio. And it says, right, if this is here, activate this, so to speak. So if a device is heard, so if you're receiving something and it hasn't got that tone within it, then it just will mute the audio and leave the, mute, leave the audio muted. If it has got the tone, then it'll let it through and it'll think it's a, a valid source of, of, of reception for it to use. So it seems logical to have that on at all times. I'm not sure uh, what the benefits, someone might be able to tell me, I'm not sure what the benefits or downsides or uh, of having it on are. There may, there may be some. Uh, LCD contrast, yeah, fairly standard stuff, software revision. That's on the receive side. Really useful, really simple, and just having a look at the build quality. This is plastic on the front here, and uh, the actual main body, all this round here, is metal, which is brilliant. I mean, it, they're so nicely made, these things. Um, the aerial itself, the aerial itself is completely flexible, so you can have that knocking against somebody and it's not going to matter in the slightest. There's no rigidity to that at all, which is fantastic. They use diversity uh, reception and the, the diversity aerial is done from whatever 
when this cable is attached. So uh, the other antenna essentially is this cable, I think. The connectivity, how these things actually connect is really solid as well. So I said, obviously it's like plugging a, uh, an iPod in, not strictly true. Uh, I'm not doing it justice there because we've got our socket on there, but they go in exactly like an iPod, but then they've got a screw connector to hold them in place. And then they, they can't, can't be pulled out. Uh, by mistake. Nice, nice design. The uh, on the side here, we've got a uh, two, and sorry, two there and one there uh, to put them in a charging bay, which you can buy as an add-on from Sennheiser. Two AA batteries. I've got some Energizer lithium ba batteries in these. Seem to last ages. I've used them for hours, uh, and they're fine. Um, you do have to replace them, but that's batteries, you know, you've got to replace them with every, with everything. I would just, if you don't want to replace batteries, buy some rechargeables and, uh, you won't have to replace them as often. You just have to recharge them. So that's the receiver. Lights on it. Oh, by the way, lights. Yeah, we've got a power light there. And we've got an RF light, which isn't on at the moment because it's not receiving anything. When it receives valid RF, that goes green. Dead simple. Oh, and keep forgetting to mention things. This has actually got the belt clip fitted at the moment. Uh, not the belt clip, sorry, the hot shoe adapter. Uh, underneath, you can see the belt clip where it is, but um, you kind of take that off and you can fit this uh, hot shoe adapter, which is only plastic, but it's as strong as it needs to be. And that just slots on top of, you, on top of the um, camera or whatever you're receiving on. Uh, which again makes it a really handy place to store it and as well as that with the hot shoe adapter is the um, tri uh, tripod thread as well so if necessary you can just stick this on maybe a light stand or uh, or a tripod you know heaven forbid you might actually use a proper tripod just to put this on that seems like a bit of a waste to me but um, but you could do that. Um, better just to buy a 15 quid light stand, put it on top of there if you're, if you're short of things to stand things on. Say hello. Hello. Oh, it's okay. It's just, a, it's just a microphone and a camera, nothing more than that. Okay, I thought you were on Skype or something. No, no. <laughs> okay, kind of, a, kind of lost, my, lost my rhythm there a bit. I've just, been, uh, just had a quick, quick phone call, uh, which has lasted about 25 minutes. And... Uh, yeah, that's throw me completely. Never mind. Right, where were we? Just done the just done the receiver side of things. This now is the transmitter. Transmitter is pretty much the same as the receiver. Uh, you got on the back, you have a belt clip, and you have the information about the product. And uh, on the front, it looks pretty much identical to the other one. On the top, it, again, it's very very similar. You've got. Um, the uh, microphone in, which again is a 3.5 mil uh, jack. And then it has another switch on top, which is really, really useful. It's just a mute switch. But the big benefit is that this mute switch on the top of here can be an RF mute or it can be an AF mute. If you want to, you can set it to turn off the actual RF, uh, save power, and that obviously mutes on the receiver. The good thing is that it mutes really gracefully. It doesn't sort of go or anything like that when it mutes. It mutes very gracefully and comes back very gracefully as well. It sort of ramps up the audio level. It doesn't just cut it in or have any sort of odd offset when it comes back in like a click or a pop. It just, it's completely seamless. It just goes quiet and then comes back in again. And that's on the, that's on the RF mute. On the AF mute, again, same, same decent, um, a uh, decent way of doing it. It's just obviously it's only only muting the audio then it's not actually uh, blocking any RF. So it's a bit quicker to come back because uh, it does take a second or so for the RF to come back, be received for it re to recognize the pilot tone and for it to then sort of fire up and say, yes, right, this is valid. I'm going to um, transmit this. Uh, sorry, I'm going to push this out into the uh, into the camera. So that probably takes in total a second and a half, two seconds, obviously with the AF side of things it just comes back straight away so it depends what you want to do it saves battery doing it on the uh, the rf side of things so what have we got on this inside again is the same two AA batteries 
and the same layout with the button here to turn it on and off, which we'll do now, just turn it on there. And then the same sort of idea with the menus where that basically acts as a, a, an escape button on the menus. And that is your button to go into stuff and to store stuff. And then you scroll through the menus with these two here. Probably didn't explain it quite so well on the other one. So looking through the menus, uh, you can see on the left hand side there, you have um, the AF level, so an audio level, which you can actually see if I just sort of, you can sort of see speaking, I'll probably do some separate shots of this, so it won't be actually what I'm saying at the moment, but I'll do, you know, it'll be moving to something. Uh, the P there is the pilot tone. It says whether or not it's, whether or not the pilot tone's active on the transmitter. And you can see at the moment it's muted and the channel is 622.5, so it's the same as on the receiver. Funnily enough, they have to be the same. That's how these things work. Uh, and that's what this, again, is for here, the infrared section. It's got the same infrared section as on the transmitter to be able to um, sync the two devices. Going into the menu, sensitivity is the first thing that comes up. That's the sensitivity of the mic, so it's the levels of your mic. I personally find it about right between minus minus 27, minus 24. It defaults to minus 30 when you get it out of the box. I find that a little bit too low, but again, you want to make sure you don't over deviate at any point. You don't sort of clip uh, at any point. Find that, uh, Again, I've so far found a good way to do that is to attach the mic as you want it to be and then just cough because people do cough and it sounds nasty when the cough clips. So you know, if your recorder's good enough, it's 20, if you're using 24-bit recording, you've got enough headroom there at the top to be able to not have it massively loud, um, sorry, not have it massively high, and you can still, um, uh, you know, have plenty of headroom, have a low level on the mic, low-ish level on the mic, and then just turn it up or process it or do whatever you need to do with it. Uh, scrolling through, frequency preset, that's just the same as the other one. You set that to match the uh, as, as, as you would on the receiver. The name again, you can set the name, name of this, auto lock, same as on the receiver. And then you have the advanced section and exit. So we'll just go through again and go to advanced. And you can uh, tune this in the same way as you can on the receiver. You can tune it very specifically. Uh, mute mode, so that's what we were talking about a moment ago. If we go into that, RF on and off or AF on and off. That determines what that does. Let's go escape out of there. And cable emula emulation defaults to minimum. And so you can set that to, I think, mimic various capacity. Capa capacity. I've left that at minimum. I'm not, you know, someone might be able to give me a better explanation of exactly what that does. I think you have capacitance on cable uh, over, you know, you have a greater capacitance along a across a longer run of cable and, and you can um, emulate that depending on what scenario you're, uh, you're going to be using it in. Some stuff might be um, done across a, long, a bigger length. This obviously won't be, so you can then emulate that. Not sure if that's what it's for. I could be way off with that, but that's kind of what I would think, seeing as it is a capacitance-related thing. Pilot tone, you set the pilot tone on here. So on this, I've got it set to active. LCD contrast, standard, reset it, software revision. And, uh, and that's about it, it's dead straightforward. So looking at the two devices side by side, um, if you've got both, both of these together, at the moment, at the moment they're, they're both set to, uh, sorry, I'll just uh, turn that one on like that and shut that. At the moment this is set to mute, the, the transmitter is set to mute. So if I turn that on now, there we go. You can see the RF lights lit up, and uh, we are we should we should be. Yeah, you can see on there. Oh, can you see on there? It won't be quite in focus, I'm afraid, because uh, I'm using face detection on the camera. Um, but you should be able to tell there that we've got some level on the AF. You can see the RF level on the left hand side is up to full. They're right next to each other, so that's pretty likely. Uh, and the AF level, I'll just speak like that. Yeah, one two one two. Then you can see the level meters turn off you can see the level meters just just about going up and down there yeah right what else to say well the microphone but 
a meter and a half of cable of cable and it looks something like this that's it this is actually the clip this section of the clip here you just see that and you just press that and the actual mic itself mic itself is is um is that portion there so and it's got the uh it comes with a little a small pop filter only very small the actual original mic is like that and then you just fit this small pop filter on the top and uh, I've actually sort of also put the cable I've kind of pushed the cable underneath the clip there uh, it's kind of got underneath the spring of the clip I'm not sure if it's actually a bit too tight to do that but it does press on the cable quite a bit but really it's just a noise reduction thing it's quite a common thing uh, to do so if, if this rustles around if this moves around like this it only goes as far as this particular you know where it's hooked onto the clip it doesn't actually it sort of reduces noise into the microphone itself that's a fairly standard thing to do on lav mics in fact it's standard to do on any microphone any microphone uh, shock mount you'll have a little bit that secures the cable so you've got no vi vibration further than a certain point or any movement further than a certain point and the microphone stays totally still or as still as possible it's never going to be totally still with a lav mic as i say meter and a half of cable and that's about it quality wise not too bad but hey you know who am i to judge on that the best way to judge is to actually try it which is what we're going to do now so we're going to plug this into the camera and i'll be back in a second okay so there we go that's um that's now recording on the lav mic rather than on the um shotgun mic so really up about lav mics i've, I've read read up on sort of things about them and her, and a lot of people describe them as an, uh, one of an evil necessity or, or some similar phrase um, and I have to agree with that really because maybe they don't sound quite as good maybe they are a bit more awkward to use maybe you can't ever stop completely stop the rustling noises that you get but the things you can do with them and the freedom they give you is amazing um, I'm, I'm sat next to a shotgun mic here which I've been using for the rest of this review now this is just out of shot here if I move, like if I were to move or needed to move as part of making this, I wouldn't have a chance because I haven't got anyone doing my audio. I haven't got anyone holding a boom. So I haven't got any chance to do that. There's, you know, I, I just can't move. I have to sit here still. Whereas with this, it's a big difference because, and this is of course the whole benefit of these things. You know, I can move up to the camera, even though, again, I say this won't be in focus. And you know, I can shift the camera around. And you can see where I've got this mount at the moment. Uh, it's just mounted on my um, on my jeans. And of course, I can go out of this room entirely and into somewhere that's maybe a little bit more acoustically pleasing, such as uh, the, the living room. So far less um, far less reverb in here there's still high ceilings but there's curtains and there's sofa and there's chairs and there's carpet and uh so it makes it a lot more uh, of a sort of maybe i should have done the review in there actually still i like this table in the kitchen but of course you know that's the whole point i can go away from camera i can walk away from the camera i can be as far away from the camera as these mics will basically allow let me just shift this back into position where was it it's about there so yeah, I can go as far away from the camera as these will allow, which is probably 100 meters or so, maybe up to that, you know, on a good day. So the, the benefits, yeah, you don't always want to use one and maybe the quality is not quite so good, but when you do want, to, when you do need to use one or when you need that freedom, it's just fantastic. It's kind of like uh, a similar analogy to me would be using wireless, uh, using wireless on a laptop or on an iPad or something, uh, and, um, and and using a land cable. Everyone used to use cables. You know, there used to be cables running across offices into 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 switches and into hubs and things like that. And uh, now people just use wireless, and it's the same same sort of idea. Why not do it this way? Uh, they 
the, presumably the microphone uses some sort of kind of compounding noise reduction or something because the quality is clean, absolutely clean, even though this is just going over a UHF transmission, basically. So, I don't know, you can judge, judge from it, you know, judge yourself to see what it sounds like. And uh, if you want any other tests or you want any raw WAV files or anything like that, just give me a shout and I'll happy, happily uh, send you something. Uh, but I um, hope you found this review useful. I've uh, certainly enjoyed doing it in here instead of, um, instead of in the room that always has a PC on in the background and in there. So I've had to shift a load of, shift a load of lighting stuff into here. And um, it's odd actually, this window behind me, which you can just see now, looks out onto quite a lot of, quite a lot of houses. And I've got a big, big light in the background there. And, and it's, it's, really, it's really quite bright. I went into the, uh, another room of the house and you can see, we're on kind of a higher level and you can see uh, there's, a, there's a roof of somewhere below that's just got this glow on it from this light even. <laughs> And uh, I just wonder what, what the neighbours must think. But uh, who cares? <laughs> anyway, I hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed the review. And um, I will hopefully catch you again soon.